Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron, and today we're going to be doing another tier list for Deep Rock Galactic. This time we're going to be just taking a look at all of the engineers overclocks right now since we recently did the Smart Rifle and we're just going to be stacking them up. We're not going to be talking about any of the other classes, um, at least as of right now. We will be talking about them later as well as I'll be doing builds for the new weapons with their new overclocks uh, later on. And we will do this list all over again once we have all the overclocks completed. We'll stick them all back on here and that's going to be a really big video. So let's talk about each of these. I'm just going to go with the primary weapons first, then the secondary weapons, and uh, briefly talk about what each of these overclocks do. Not go into all the mechanics of them because some of them are very complicated with all the things that you can do with them. So I'm going to keep this very brief. Before I start, I would like to say that this is all just based on my own opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, um, and my opinion is bound to change um, or subject to change at any point so i might think that one overclock is not really all that great to start out with but it's really good later on um same with i might not have been aware of things that you could do with it that make it actually really good uh let me also go over the tiers really quick since for some reason people <laughs> hop onto the videos and then jump to the end and they usually only look at whatever is in s tier s tier is pretty much just what's busted Whatever is broken, it, that's what I put into S tier. Anything that's just pretty much overpowered or overtuned or really strong in some way is probably going to go to S tier for me. A tier is going to be very solid, very strong, all around really good overclocks. Uh, B tier is going to be pretty good overclocks. They give you a good bonus, not, a, not really a downside. C tier is going to be kind of the average overclocks. The overclocks that are just kind of okay or that I would more likely want to use over the base gun then, you know, not necessarily run an overclock. So these might be highly specialized overclocks. And then D tier is the overclocks that I wish would get buffed or changed in some way, or just aren't really all that great overall, I would say. Naturally, there's going to be a whole lot less things in D and S tier, in my opinion. Um, and there's going to be a whole lot of like B, C, and A tier. Anyway, let's begin with the Warthog. And our first overclock is the Stunner. This one makes it so we do more damage to stunned enemies and we have a higher chance of stunning enemies. It's a pretty good um, overclock overall. Uh, I'd put this one into B tier, like a lot of clean overclocks. It's just, it's pretty solid. Um, it gives you nothing but a bonus with no downside to it, so it's not bad. Our next clean overclock for the Warthog is Lightweight Magazines. This increases the amount of ammo that you get, and it makes it so your reload is a little bit quicker. That's all really good, and that's really what the Warthog needs. This is like A tier for the Warthog. It, it's a pretty solid overclock, I would say. For our one balanced for the Warthog, we have the Magnetic Pellet Alignment. This reduces the base spread and makes it so we do 30% more damage to weak spots, but we have a slightly slower rate of fire. If you go with the automatic fire with this, it completely cancels it out, and then you just have tighter spread and weak spot damage. This one's really good. This one's probably my favorite one for the Warthog. I would put this one up into A tier. It's still nothing, like, insane. It's just a solid all-around um, overclock, I would say. Then we have Cycle Overload. This one increases our damage slightly. It increases our rate of fire, but it also increases our reload speed and it increases our spread. This one's only really good if you like getting close and spraying down an enemy. You can do a lot of burst damage to single targets with this, but it's not really one of my favorites. I would still say that this one's B tier though, because it definitely has a spot. Um, it, it still can be useful. And then our last overclock for the Warthog, since we only have five with this one, is mini shells. We get a lot more ammo, larger magazine size, less recoil, but we get less damage overall. Uh, oh, also, we can't stun any enemies with the mini shells now. This one's okay. Um, this one's probably like another B tier for me. Um, I think I'd rather have it over cycle overload. It's just you can't really build the shotgun with the mini shells to be incredibly strong. Uh, at least not as much as like the lightweight magazine or the magnetic pellet alignment or even stunner for that matter. But it's not a bad thing either uh, it's good for spamming into crowds you can have a really large magazine and you know no recoil is pretty good too so as you can see shotgun pretty good overclocks you know maybe one or two of them i might move down to c tier like the cycle overload or mini shells or something but for the most part pretty good um i don't have any complaints about their overclocks next up we're going to move on to stubby and our first one is super slim rounds now super slim rounds gives us extra ammo as well as it reduces our base spread two really good things for stubby um, B tier. Um, I guess compared to the shotgun ones, I, it'd probably be higher than these. Then we have well-oiled machine. Well-oiled machine gives us a little bit faster rate of fire and a faster reload. Again, not bad. 
I'd probably put this one up into B tier too. Um, probably on the same level as Stunner, somewhere right there. Then we have the uh, EM Refire Booster, which makes it so we have a quite a bit faster rate of fire, but we have more recoil, but we also do more electric damage. That's pretty good. This one's actually really good for Stubby. It's probably my favorite one for Stubby, but I don't think it's like, again, I feel like it's similar to Magnetic Pelt Alignment. It's a solid A tier, but nothing super crazy either. Just good. Then we've got the Lightweight Rounds. Lightweight Rounds reduces our damage by one, so very slightly, but we get a lot more ammo and we also lose out on Rate of Fire. Losing out on the Rate of Fire doesn't matter too much and the extra ammo is pretty welcome with Stubby. Usually if you're taking this, you're going to take it with a high damaged uh, secondary something like the Fat Boy or um, High Voltage Crossover or something like that. Um, so it fits really well with those loadouts, and I'd probably also put this one up into A tier. It's pretty good. I like using it with those type of loadouts. Then we've got the Turret Arc, which makes it so we can set up our two turrets and then arc lightning between them and deal damage. This comes at the cost of reducing our rate of fire and reducing our total ammo. This one I'm not really that big of a fan of. It can be really good in certain circumstances or if you're willing to set up the right perimeter, I guess, with your turrets. Uh, you're definitely going to want to be taking two turrets with this, so you can't use just one turret with it. It, it takes a lot of like setup, so I'm going to put this into C tier because it is highly specialized. Um, it can be good, but it's probably one of the weaker ones, at least in my opinion, that we've talked about so far. Then we've got Turret EM Discharge. This comes at the cost of damage as well as magazine size. But whenever we shoot our turret, this will then discharge dealing damage to all enemies around the turret, as well as all friends around the turret. It'll just deal damage to everything. Again, this isn't one of my favorite overclocks, and I would say that it's specialized, but this one is better than turret arc, I would say. Um, at least I've had more success with it than turret arc. And I think I'd put this one into, like, B tier. Uh, it's, it's definitely not an overclock for me, but I can see how it can be useful. Uh, again, especially if you're running two turrets and you have a, a clean like line of sight to your turret so you can actually hit it and get some lightning damage onto enemies. All right, so that does Stubby. Now we're moving on to the Loki Smart Rifle. First up, we have Eraser, which Eraser makes it so we have a uh, larger magazine size by a little bit and we get more lock-ons. Um, that's good. It's another B tier. <laughs> it's probably somewhere here in the middle with the other thing man let's put it there just to get some variety in uh eraser yeah not bad at all uh i like it quite a bit well i actually i'd probably put it above stunner really <laughs> maybe not above stubbies two clean ones but it's still pretty good and then we've got the armor break module this makes it so when we're fully locked on we break things armor we go right through it uh, it actually has like the max amount of armor breaking that you can have and it's really solid. I'd also put this one up into B tier. You do need to have full locks onto this. If it was just, you could shoot and it would break through armor or any locks, then this probably would be like A tier or maybe even S tier. But since you need all locks on there uh, and it increases your maximum number of locks, uh, B tier seems fine. Then we have the explosive chemical rounds. This one makes it so when you have at least three locks onto a single target and you shoot your gun, then the third shot will explode dealing damage. It also fears enemies within a very small radius of the explosion, um, and the explosion does pretty decent damage. This one, again, is similar to, like, Turret Arc. It's not really one of my favorites, but it's pretty decent. I'd put it above Turret Arc into C tier. It's, like, on the high end of C tier, where Turret Arc's kind of in the middle to low end, I would say. Um, still not bad, and definitely can get a lot of uh, use out of it. And then we have Seeker Rounds. Seeker rounds are pretty decent. They slow down your overall uh, rate of fire once you have locked onto enemies, but all of your locked shots uh, will go through terrain and will go through anything else really, especially if you have blow through rounds. This also does come at the cost of your reload speed by a little bit, uh, but you do get a larger uh, field of view with your lock on, so it's more forgiving. That's all pretty good from seeker rounds. I... I, when I did the Loki video, I put this one up into A tier, on the very low end of A tier. But looking at this compared to the other weapons, I don't think I'd put it above Stubby's little uh, clean overclock. So I think I'm going to put it down here into B tier right now. It's not bad, but it's not, it's not insane either. It's like A or B tier for me. So I feel like I'll put it there for right now. Then our next one is Executioner. Executioner makes it so we do extra weak spot damage when we're fully locked on. 
Uh, we also lock on to enemies faster, and we don't have as many targets that we can lock on to at the cost of losing ammo and losing ammo in our magazine. That's not a huge deal with Executioner. This one's pretty good. This one, I feel, is similar to, like, these three up here, or maybe these four up here, where it's just an all-around real solid uh, choice, and I'd probably put it right up there into A tier. It's good. Then we have Neural Lasso. Neural Lasso makes it so we, um, whenever we're locked onto an enemy and we shoot it, we slow it down, although the slow decays very fast. This can stack multiple times with each slow of the lock that we have on the enemy. Uh, this comes at the cost of having a slightly longer lock-on speed by 15%. Not a huge deal for the things that it does. And then if you build an electric build where you're slowing down an enemy twice and you're having guaranteed electricity damage on the third shot, Neural Lass was pretty decent. I'd probably put this one up into A tier as well. Uh, low end A tier, I don't think it's as useful as these other ones we've talked about. All right, then we're moving on to the secondaries of Engineer, and anybody who plays Engineer will tell you that the secondaries are pretty crazy on Engineer, and their overclocks kind of match that. And so far, we've only had two kind of average overclocks, I would say, where all the other ones have a pretty good purpose, or some of them are really strong. Um, first up, we have Pack Rat for the Grenade Launcher. This one is extremely simple. This is, you get two extra ammo. <laughs> which is pretty good. <laughs> Two extra ammo on the grenade launcher. It's going to go at the bottom of B tier, but it's still a B tier. Uh, then we have clean sweep. This increases your damage as well as increases your explosion radius. Also pretty good. I would put this one up into the high end of B tier. Um, maybe I'll put it at the top of B tier. You could argue that it's A tier though too, because it doesn't really have a downside and the upside is pretty good. Then for balanced overclocks, we have the compact rounds. This gives you five more ammo, but we lose out on area damage and AOE radius. That's not too bad, I would say. The radius, yeah, that kind of sucks. The area damage, eh, we can live with that. But the extra ammo, that's really nice to have with a grenade launcher. Um, I'd probably also put this one into B tier. Um, yeah, let's just put it with the other. Ammo, one pack rat. Pack rat could be potentially better, but... I like compact rounds a little bit more. They're they're pretty comparable, though, I'd say. And then we have the RJ250 Compound. This one is probably one of the most fun overclocks that Engineer actually has. This one makes it so your grenade launcher doesn't do very much area damage. It still does enough area damage, and if you make it into, like, incinerary grenades, then it, it still works perfectly fine against crowds. Um, maybe not so good against single targets, but you can also launch yourself with this and you get a lot more extra ammo with this. So that's kind of cool. You also reload it faster, so you can save yourself potentially. Uh, you can also fling yourself to your death though too. So I don't know where to put the RJ250 compound. In terms of utility, it does give engineer you like movement, which nothing else does. So in that regard, it's really good. But in terms of like, how good is it for killing stuff? Eh... It's okay. Um, I feel like I should put this at the low end of A tier, even though it does have a lot of utility. So I guess it depends on what you're running as your primary, because this is going to be good for crowds and good for getting around the map. So if you have something that's strong in single targets, maybe you're running magnetic pellet alignment or executioner or the refire booster. Sure. Then we have hyper propellant, which hyper propellant is pretty crazy. This turns your grenade launcher into a railgun. This gives you way more direct damage, way faster uh, velocity of your shot, but your AOE radius is really, really tiny. It's it's pretty much just whatever you hit with it. Um, you also lose out on total ammo, which kind of sucks, but this one, it just, it feels so good to snipe things across the map, and it actually gives you range. The only other weapon that you have that kind of has range is the new Loki Smart Rifle if you build it for range. So if you still want to use close range weapons like the shotgun, submachine gun, or one of the other Loki uh, builds, then hyper propellant is really good. And I'm going to put it up into S tier. It's pretty crazy when you can just one shot half the big bugs in the game. Or when you can just shoot it right at the face of a Praetorian and knock out like three quarters of its health. And then our last grenade launcher overclock is Fat Boy. This one is very similar to hyper propellant. This one gives you tons of AoE damage and a huge explosion radius but your projectile moves extremely slow compared to what it shot before. And you also lose out on a lot of total ammo. So you can use this one, but you can only use it sparingly. This also, once it sets off, creates a nuclear cloud that deals damage to all enemies or and friends. 
that are in it. This is a good and a bad thing. It's very easy to kill yourself and your friends with Fat Boy. So I know a lot of engineers like running the um, passive perk friendly. That way you're less likely to do this. It'll still hurt, but you probably won't die from it. Um, and the Fat Boy is great for clearing crowds. It's great for single target damage. If it held more shots, it would even be better. I don't think it's... Uh, I, I'm going to put it up into S tier with Hyper Propellant. I don't know if it's necessarily better than Hyper Propellant. I prefer Hyper Propellant over Fat Boy. But Fat Boy is a lot of fun. You can also mine with Fat Boy too, so I guess that's another bonus. Because um, you just shoot this at anything and it's going to blow up everything. And then we're going to move on to the Breach Cutter. And our first overclock here is uh, Roll Control. This one makes it so that you can control the roll of the plasma uh, cutter. So you shoot it, and then you keep holding down the trigger, and you rotate the beam. Which can be really good. You can actually get a lot of value out of this, especially on escort missions. But a lot of the time, it's not entirely necessary either. Um, so I would probably put this one up into B tier. It's good, but... It's, it's not entirely necessary, in my opinion. It's it's just good. Then we have the Stronger Plasma Current. This gives you more damage with your plasma, as well as your projectile has a slightly longer lifetime, which can be useful. Um, more DPS on the Plasma uh, Cutter or Breach Cutter is always useful, so this one's probably like B tier as well. Good. Nothing really to complain about. Then we have Lightweight Cases, which this one is <laughs> kind of crazy. Even though it's super basic, you have a slightly faster reload speed and you get extra ammo. The extra ammo is really good on the Breach Cutter. And this one's going to go up into S tier. I don't even think that this one's necessarily overpowered. I think it's just in combination with the Breach Cutter, which is already so strong. This just helps out that much more and it's so good. Um, I would rather have extra bullets for this than probably extra bullets for anything. I don't know if it's necessarily better than these two because these two change the way the weapon works this one the weapon still works the same it's just it's really strong and you can use it more often then for balanced overclocks we have high voltage crossover this one reduces our uh, magazine size slightly but this makes it so we're always guaranteed to electrocute enemies which will slow them down and deal damage over time high voltage crossover is really good too i'd probably put this one high up into a tier and then we have return to sender this one can be really good but it's kind of situational you can get a lot of value out of it you lose out on total ammo but now when you fire the breach cutter you can then recall the breach cutter line back to you dealing even more damage you could also potentially hit yourself or hit friends with it but you can deal a lot of damage once you stop this inside something like a praetorian and bring it back you're pretty much guaranteed to kill it then it's also really good against um dreadnoughts if you can do that but this does have a certain range because if you shoot it and then wait a while and then try to pull the trigger again to call it back to you, it won't work. <laughs> You'll just fire out another shot. So it, it kind of depends. If you're, if you're on a very flat ground area, it, if you just happen to get a really useful map that has flat ground, then like Return to Sender is really strong. Without that, though, it's a little bit inconsistent. I, I would still probably put it up into A tier. It's still really solid. Uh, but it's kind of finicky. And then for our unstable overclocks, we have Spinning Death. Spinning Death is another kind of uh, wonky overclock, I guess, for the Breach Cutter. This makes it so once you fire the uh, projectile, it'll go out and then start spinning around and cutting up pretty much everything like it's inside of a blender. This vastly reduces your damage, reduces your ammo, reduces your magazine count. But your projectile lifetime is much longer, as well as the projectile width is much longer than it normally would be. You can rack up a serious amount of damage per second if you can get this to stop on top of an enemy and just keep spinning on top of them. It's really good then. But uh, again, it's kind of like one of those overclocks where it can be really good, but a lot of times it's just okay. Um, you can also potentially put this into a crowd uh, in a choke point where enemies have to walk through and it deals tons of damage to them. If you're using Plasma Trail with this... It's pretty good, I would say. Spinning Death is similar to, like, Return to Sender in a lot of ways. And I think I'd probably put it up into A tier as well. On the low end of A tier, though, it's just, it's it's kind of wonky to use, in my opinion. Maybe down into B tier, I don't know. It's somewhere there. <laughs> and then our last overclock is Inferno. Which, on paper, Inferno looks really bad. In practice, it's not so bad, though. Um, this reduces your overall damage by a bit. Um, 
still you do a lot of damage per second with the breach cutter and more importantly it reduces your armor breaking now it does reduce your armor breaking by quite a bit but this does add the inferno status effect which pretty much means anything that you hit with it will catch fire it makes it really strong for clearing up crowds and it makes it really strong for even killing things like Praetorians. It's it's not particularly bad at that. It's not as good against single targets, though. It's not as good at killing Praetorians as some of the other overclocks. And it's not as good at killing Dreadnoughts as pretty much any of the other overclocks that you could put on it. So for that, if you only want to use it for a crowd build, it's not bad. I, I would say that it's not bad at all. But it is more specialized then. And you can't always be sure as to exactly what you're going to be facing in each of the maps. So I would say that this one is probably the weakest breach cutter add-on. Um, and I think I'd put it to the high end of C tier. But it's it's still okay. Um, I know a lot of people really like to hate on Inferno and would probably like to see it into D tier. But it, it's not that bad. You can still use it. You can still get a decent amount of use out of it. It's just it's more specialized, similar to like these other ones down here. Um, I would say I wouldn't really say that any of engineers' overclocks are really D tier. Um, I, I guess it depends on the situation and the map, because then some of them potentially could be. But all of them are pretty usable, I would say. Uh, there's only a few that are just kind of like highly specialized here that aren't bad, but you know, just maybe not my cup of tea. A lot of pretty decent ones, some really good ones, and some really powerful ones up here in the S tier. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so very much for watching it. I really do appreciate it. If you guys would like to see more Deep Rock Galactic, be sure that you get subscribed. And special thanks to the supporters of this channel, my members over here on YouTube, and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. If you'd like access to that, there is a link down in the description. Be sure to check that out. Thanks, and bye!